Hello, my name is Dr. Divya Panikar. Welcome to part 2 of Leveraging Artificial Intelligence for Better Wound Outcomes. In the last video, I shared insights and expertise based on my lecture with the same title at Rensho Hospital. We talked about how wound management effectively assesses a patient with a chronic wound in order to classify, identify and most importantly diagnose a patient's wound. We discussed how wound management without the help of technology can be very difficult. And finally, we concluded that artificial intelligence enables good wound management to be effective, transferable and repeatable. In this segment, I want to delve a little bit deeper into how artificial intelligence helps us to do exactly this. The first step of any good wound management algorithm starts with an accurate assessment. Good assessments anchor the treatment objectives and enable us to set appropriate treatment plans. For many of us in clinical practice, the triangle of wounds assessment is a gold standard. And we can see there are quite a number of components involved. Measurement. Measurement of wounds is an inevitable component of wound assessment and often the first baseline in tracking and prognosis. With length, width and depth measurements, we are able to monitor healing rates objectively and determine if the wound is static, deteriorating or improving. These inaccuracies and variabilities could be inter-rater, meaning between people measuring, or even intra-rater, meaning different measurements with the same person. Often too, depth is very difficult to measure and we sometimes skip this step in order to avoid inflicting pain to the patient. Artificial intelligence overcomes these challenges. With good machine learning algorithms, image processing captures the region of interest accurately and consistently. It automates measurements for length, width and depth and with this we can confidently trend the healing progress and plan appropriate interventions when necessary. Tissue classification. Tissue viability is also another key assessment component. Identifying the types of tissues namely necrotic, sluffy, granulation and epithelization. We would also want to know the change in the amount of these tissues, especially when tracking the wound. It is not easy for us to estimate accurately using the human eye. AI can do this automatically in seconds and it's proven to be mostly accurate. That being said, the element of clinical expertise and experience is still very valuable. Clinicians must be trained to value and using their own judgment edit accordingly when necessary. Risk of infection. In the time model, the risk of infection is a key assessment area. This sometimes gets missed out in the manual process, especially when we have less experienced clinicians. Algorithms can help us automate setting of infection parameters to alert us if there are indeed risks of infection. Again, Clinicians should be able to value add based on their experience, judgment and if necessary, override this outcome but record their comments. Another significant advantage of AI and digital tools is the ability to have reduced physical contact with the wound. We are all learning the value of contactless in this current environment as well. Objective assessment of wound healing. In the manual process, monitoring is often difficult due to fragmented information. As we dial up on clinical efficacy, especially in complex chronic wounds, we must move towards evidence-based methods. The practical and clinical application to this is easily understood by invoking scoring systems that allow us to objectively determine wound healing. Algorithms in digital tools allow us to easily and automatically compute key wound attributes and record them into composite scores. For example, the very well-known PUSH score or the less common wound bed score. These composite scores can be charted and help us easily monitor wound healing progress 
especially if we want to compare based on prognostic expectations referring to research papers and studies. What has been shared so far, I think, clearly demonstrates how powerful artificial intelligence can be. The next step is to translate these assessments into treatment objectives and to formulate treatment plans. Can AI and digitization help us to do this as well? In the next segment, I will delve a little bit more deeply into these aspects. Take care for now.